Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel and welcome to this uh, video on the shortwave spectrum megahertz by megahertz. And on this video, we're going to talk about 28 to 29 megahertz, or on most receivers, it's going to say 28,000 to 29,000 kilohertz. So, what is there in that one megahertz range? Well, this is entirely dedicated to the 10 meters amateur radio band. So it's easy to see when you look at that, that the 10 meter band, if you watched my 29 to 30 megahertz video, is the biggest amateur band on shortwave. Uh, 1.7 megahertz or 1700 kilohertz wide, it is the biggest chunk of amateur radio um, bands on the shortwave spectrum. Unfortunately, it is very dependent on solar activity. So unless you've got local hams, and it happens, I've heard uh, amateur radio operators locally sometimes have a chat on 10 meters, uh, you know, um, line of sight communications because the, uh, the, the ionosphere couldn't support the shortwave propagation on that range. But when solar activity is higher or when there's something called sporadic e-skip, the band comes alive with tons of signals. And how is it divided? Is there specific modes? The biggest chunk of it is upper side band. But like every amateur band, there are some rules that are not, once again, I want to you know, talk about the fact that these rules are not something you have to do. Somebody could use whatever mode they want as long as they follow the basic rules of uh, amateur radio anywhere. But the rules that are set up, most AM radio operators actually obey these rules, which means the bottom part, 28,000 to, you know, up to 28,060 or something like that, is the chunk where it's actually dedicated most of that to CW or what we call Morse code. So that bottom part will often have Morse code. But depending on, uh, you know, if there's a contest, for example, I've heard, I've heard stations in Morse code above 28100 uh, when the contests are there. So, you know, sometimes it gets a little wider than usual because of contests or, you know, that, that, that happens quite often. From 28060 to about 28100, 120, you might hear some digital modes. Here you'll hear FT8, for example, on 28074. You'll hear JT65, 28076. You'll hear some radio teletype, 28080 to 28100, roughly. You'll hear some. Uh, PSK 31, 28070. You might hear around that range also some other modes like, you know, Olivia uh, and, and so on. There's a lot of uh, different modes and uh, that are that sometimes are used. I've heard in this band uh, a lot of different uh, modes of digital communications. Um, use a software like FLDG or uh, multi-PSK, and, and you can decode these. It's, it's very, a lot of fun when activity is there. 28,120 to about 28,300. Most of what's in there, I mean, it could be anything, but most of what's in there are beacons. There's propagation beacons that exist around the frequency ranges of 28,120 to 28,300. And these are nice because they're scattered all over the world. That means when propagation is good, you actually will notice that you can hear beacons from different areas. And it's nice because it gives you a general idea of the communications, the propagation from one part to another part of the world. And so I often, when propagation opens up, I often listen to that range to see, you know, where is the general vicinity of I, the, the, the communications that I can hear using the beacons gives me an idea of where I might be hearing signals on the 10 meter band. I've heard beacons from Europe. I've heard beacons from the United States and Canada. 
So, and there's a lot of them, and there's actually some uh, beacon lists on, um, if you just type 10 meter beacon list, you will see there are several lists available that will give you details of all the beacons active. And these are usually very low power, you know, and ranging from uh, 100 milliwatts to uh, a couple of watts and uh, 5, 10 watts sometimes. Uh, but it's a lot of fun to chase when propagation is uh, actually active. And roughly 28,300 all the way up to 29,000 is upper sideband. Everything in there is communications in upper sideband mode. And you'll hear lots of hams, especially when propagation is right. Now you might say, I never hear anything on 10 meters. I've never heard anything. It must be dead. The problem with the 10 meter band is is that it um, has a bad reputation in low solar activity. And it does have a bad reputation of being not always very good when solar activity is not high enough. It is very dependent on propagation and ionization of the ionosphere due to the sun's activity. That is true. But there's other phenomena that might actually give you signals here. Uh, meteor scatter, for example, or um, sporadic e-skip, which is one that is happening very often. And that means when that is alive, you should tune around the bands. The problem is a lot of hams are under the impression that when solar activity is low, it's uh, useless to go and check out what's on 10 meters. So because of that, sometimes activity is not as high as it should because too many hams are on the habit of well, there's, you know, we're in the low part of solar activity, so that band's not going to be open until, you know, and in, in only going to open in four or five years when we get back to solar max. It's untrue, and unfortunately, too many hams think that. Check it every day, because sporadic e-skip can happen at any hour of any day of the year. There are periods when it's higher, higher chances, like, you know, June, July, and a little bit around December, January, but... It can happen any day. To give you an idea, we're in September, and last week there was a little bit of sporadic e-skip uh, around, um, was it September, like September 12th, 13th, so around there. I did hear some sporadic e-skip. It was brief, it didn't last for very long, but, you know, 10 meters was open for a couple of hours. You got to listen and check it out regularly, and you'll be surprised what you can hear. And the best way to see if it's open, check the propagation beacons. Check if you hear Morse code between 28120 to 28300. If you hear Morse code in here, the 10 meter band is open, and maybe you'd be surprised at the activity that you will have. So, 28 to 29 megahertz, pretty much the 10 meter amateur radio band. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for following us on this channel.